Let's look at the growing case of purple loosestrife, a pretty perennial that can be a pretty big problem. It is not true that Jimi Hendrix was looking at a field of loose strife when he wrote the song Purple Haze. However, it is true that purple loose strife is a noxious weed, noted for its color and apparent beauty in late summer, when it provides important nectar and pollen for bees. The problem is purple loose strife grows in such a manner that it crowds out native plant species, eliminating important food sources and destroying diversity of cover for essential wetland wildlife. We need different grasses and plants for a balanced habitat. We don't want just purple loosestrife, no matter how pretty it may appear. Originally introduced into the Great Lakes region through the contaminated ballast tanks of foreign freighters, purple loosestrife was also once seen as a medicinal herb for the treatment of diarrhea, dysentery, ulcer, and sores. The problem is a single plant can produce more than two and a half million seeds annually. That's every year. And the seeds are easily spread by wind or water or being stuck to wildlife or humans. Eventually the plant could be found everywhere and too much purple loose strife is definitely not a good thing. Nature needs diversity, a lot of different plants, to keep everything in balance. Purple loose strife is typically found in wet soil habitats. The plant can grow in a couple feet of water or on dry shores near the water's edge. You will often see purple loose strife in roadside ditches. Plants can range from two to six feet tall with several foot long flower stalks on a single plant. Purple loose strife usually blooms from early July to September. When their flowers drop off, Capsules containing many tiny seeds appear in their place. Like grains of sand, they end up everywhere. When scientists from the US and Canada started looking for a way to reduce the populations of this plant pest, they went back to where it came from, Europe. They wondered if there might be a biological agent that could control purple loosestrife. Maybe there was a bug that would eat the plant. They found 120 species of insects associated with purple loosestrife in Europe, and they put those insects together with 50 different plants to see if there was an insect that would eat purple loosestrife and only purple loosestrife. Testing was done in England near London, and they found four beetles that could do the job. So they brought the beetles to North America. Good idea, right? Well, we don't have to worry about the beetles because they broke up more than 50 years ago. That's a teacher joke. The beetles, the musical group. Yeah, but we're not talking about Paul, John, George, or Ringo here. The idea is because these beetles only feast on purple loose strife, they'll die off when the food source disappears. In fact, I found a large patch of purple loose strife near the bike path where I live and one day I got off my bike to get a closer look, and I was quite surprised at what I saw. I saw the Beatles, the bug, not the band. And a few days later, when I returned to the area, the purple flowers were completely gone, and so were the insects. So scientists are taking a calculated risk when they bring in the Beatles. I guess they're hoping for strawberry fields forever or an octopus's garden, or something? Here comes the sun, help. Okay, I'll let it be. I hope you've liked what I've shared about purple loose strife. Please subscribe to my channel to follow more cases of invasive species. And as always, thanks for watching.